Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome back to my C++ series. So today, we're going to be talking all about memory. And in fact, we're going to be talking about two different types of memory in C++, the stack and the heap, which you may have heard a lot about and might not be 100% sure on what that means, why they're used, when they're used, and how all of that works, and why you even care about how that works. Okay, so first of all, the stack and the heap, what are they? Well, when our program starts, it gets divided into a bunch of different like areas of memory, and there's a lot more than just the stack and the heap, but the two kind of ones that we care about most, I would say, would be the stack and the heap. Now, in terms of how applications are launched and what the operating system does is, loosely, it will load the entire program into memory, as well as allocate a whole bunch of physical RAM so that our actual application can run. Now, the stack and the heap are two areas that we actually have in our RAM. The stack is typically an area of memory that has a predefined size, usually around two megabytes or so. And the heap is an area that is also kind of predefined to a default value. However, it can grow and change as our application goes on. Now, it's important to note that the actual location, the physical location of these two areas of memory is ultimately the same. It's in our RAM. A lot of people tend to think that the stack might be something that's stored in the CPU cache or something like that. Whilst it is likely to be hot in the cache because we're continually accessing it, that's, we, we can't like, not all of it will be stored in our cache and that's not how any of that works. So just keep in mind that the actual location of those two areas of memory is in our memory, right? That's why they're two different areas of our memory. Now, memory in our program is used so that we can actually store data. We need a place to store the data that we need to run our program, whether that be local variables, or maybe we'd read stuff in from a file and we need to process that data, all of that kind of stuff, we need a place to store that. And the stack and the heap, they are areas in which we're allowed to store data. Now, they work very, very differently, but fundamentally what they do is the same. We can ask C++ to give us some memory from either the stack or the heap, and it will give us a block of memory of our requested size if everything goes well. The difference is how it allocates that memory for us. So suppose for an example, that we want to be able to store an integer. An integer on most platforms is four bytes an int, right? So how do we find a contiguous block of four bytes of memory. Contiguous just means in a row, right? How do we find that block of four bytes of memory? The way that the stack will give us that memory versus the way that the heap will give us that memory, that's different. And when we ask for memory like that, that's called a memory allocation or just an allocation for short. So let's take a look at some of the differences between allocating an int and maybe various other kind of pieces of data on the stack versus the heap in our actual C++ code. So I'm going to show you how to allocate three different types of data over here in our program. First of all, we'll start off with an int. So I'll just write int value equals five. That's it, that's how you allocate an integer on the stack. And in fact, we're also giving it the value five. If we were to do this on the heap, it would look like this. In pointer h, I'll say h value for heap value equals new int. And then we have to dereference that h value and give it the value five, okay? So you can notice that it is two lines of code, but more importantly, we actually use the new keyword here to allocate on the heap. That's what kind of distinguishes these two allocations. That is a stack allocation and this is a heap allocation. With arrays, it's kind of similar. We have int array and then five, for example, for five elements in the array. And on the heap, this would look like this. Int h array for heap array equals new int five, like that. So again, the major difference being where we're using the new keyword here to actually allocate that memory. And then finally, I'll show you a quick example with an object. So if I make a struct here or a class, doesn't really matter, called vector three, and this will just have three floats, x, y, z. If I was to allocate this on the stack, it would look like this, vector three, vector, and on the heap, it would look like this, vector three pointer h vector equals new vector three. And these parentheses are of course optional, but I like to keep them in. Now, before I run this application and step through and show you how it actually works, let's actually give these, these variables of ours default values. So this in array has absolutely nothing right now. So let's maybe give it some values. I'll say array zero equals one. And then Let's also give these just ascending numbers, two, three, four, five. That should be easy enough to see. I'm gonna copy and paste this and do the same for our H array, making sure that I, of course, type in H here. And then for our vector, I'm just going to use the default constructor here to actually give it some values. So we'll say X will be 10 by default, Y will be 11, and Z will be 12. Now these are floats, so they might look a little bit different in memory, but it should be okay. All right, cool. So now, so now let's put a breakpoint over here and hit F5. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually go to the memory address of value. So if I type in ampersand value in my memory view over here, you can access the memory view by going to debug, windows, memory, and then memory one. 
you can see that it takes me to the memory address of that variable. Now, ccccc in debug mode means that we just haven't actually initialized that value yet. So if I hit F10, you can see that we changed to five. So now we have that value in our actual memory. Pretty simple. Now let's hit F10 and see where this array actually is. So I'm just gonna type in array. It already is a pointer because it's an array and we'll see where we are. Okay, pretty cool. So we have one here. Let's hit F10 and then again, and then again, and then again. Okay, cool. So check that out. We have one, two, three, four, five in our memory all in a row, brilliant. Now, if we look over a few bytes, we also have five over here, right? And that five happens to be our value five. So if I go to the memory address of value once more, you can see that if I scroll up just a little bit, that's my value and that is my actual array. So they're right next to each other. Now there are some bytes in between the two. That's just because we're running in debug mode. It's actually just adding safety guards kind of around all of our variables to make sure that we don't overflow them or access them in the wrong memory address and all that kind of stuff. And finally we have our vector. So if I hit F10 and then I look at the actual memory address of our vector, you can see that over here we have 02041, blah, blah, blah. Basically we have our 12 bytes here that represents our vector, a bunch of safety guards, and then the one, two, three, four, five array, and then that five variable. So it's all really kind of close together in memory because what actually happens is when we allocate variables in the stack, all that happens is the stack pointer, that is the pointer of like the top of the stack, basically just moves, moves that amount of bytes. So if I want to allocate an integer, that's four bytes, we move the stack pointer four bytes. That's it. If I want to allocate an array, like we have here, five integers, that's four times five or 20, 20 bytes, the stack pointer moves 20 bytes. And finally, for our vector three, we have three floats. Each float is four bytes, so 12 bytes. We just move the stack pointer, that is it. The, the, the memory is literally stored on top of each other like a stack. Now, in most stack implementations, we actually grow the stack backwards, which is why you're seeing higher memory addresses having like the first value. So int value is actually stored at a higher memory address and then we kind of store the, uh, the array next to it, but kind of backwards at a lower memory address value and then, because it kind of grows backwards. But the idea of a stack is we literally just stack things on top of each other, which is why a stack allocation is extremely fast. It's literally like one CPU instruction. All we do is we move the stack pointer and then we return the address of that stack pointer. That's it. So again, I wanna allocate an integer, that's four bytes. I move the stack pointer, in this case backwards, four bytes and I return that memory address because that is the beginning of my block of four bytes. That is what a stack allocation is. It's extremely fast. Let's take a look at what the heap allocation actually does. So there's not really much point in showing you this because the memory is not really gonna be close together, but if we just take a look at H value, you see we've, we still of course get five over here and then just in the kind of middle of nowhere, if you note the address of this, it's actually 59BB18. Now if I look at my array and I take a look at H array, you can see it's at a completely different memory address. It hasn't been initialized yet, so if we hit F F10 a few times, you can see, of course, those variables do get set. But that address is 568 there at the end, and H value is BB18, just completely different areas of our memory. So there's not really much point in showing you this memory view anyway. But what I do wanna mention is a few things about this heap allocation. First of all, yes, I am using the new keyword here. However, if you were using smart pointers and you were using make unique or make shared, it's exactly the same thing. It will call new for you. And then the other really important thing, of course, is that you actually have to delete memory that you allocate using new. Smart pointers will do that for you, but since we have used new here, we actually have to call delete h value, delete h array with the array delete operator here, and delete h vector as well. So we do actually have to manually free our memory. Whereas with the stack as well, what happens is once this scope in which you've allocated that stack memory actually ends, all of the memory that you've allocated in that stack just gets popped off, it just gets freed. So if we were to do something like wrap this in a scope, it can be any scope, it can be this function scope of this main function, or it can just be an empty scope like this, or like a for loop, a while loop, of, uh, an if statement, whatever, any kind of scope. When this scope comes to an end, everything that was allocated on the stack inside that scope just gets popped off. It's just freed, it's just gone, it's reclaimed, because this, the stack just moves to the position it was before we actually entered this scope. So that's another really important difference between the two. The stack, you kind of just get a free, free, in the sense that it doesn't cost you anything to free any memory because the stack just, because again, freeing memory with the stack is basically the same operation as allocating it. It's just that instead of moving our stack pointer backwards and returning that address, we just pop everything off the stack. So our stack pointer goes back up to where it was before the scope began. 
one CPU instruction, it's basically free. Whereas with delete, that obviously has to actually free everything. Now let's talk a little bit about what the new keyword actually does. Now I do have a video on this, definitely check that out. If you're more interested in this kind of object lifetime stuff as well, I have made a video about that as well. So the object lifetime video is more about how stack allocations work and how we can kind of, you know, use scopes to our advantage when dealing with this automatic deletion thing. Definitely recommend checking that out as well. In fact, I'll probably just leave a list of videos over there in the top right corner so that you can just check out. Anyway, let's just talk a little bit about how the heap actually works and what new and delete do. So the new keyword will really just call malloc a function called malloc or memory allocate. And what that will do is in turn, usually call the underlying operating system like platform specific function. And that will allocate memory for you on the heap. And the way that it does that is when you start your application, you get a certain amount of physical RAM kind of allocated to you. And your program will maintain something called a free list, which basically just keeps track of which blocks of memory are free and where they are and all of that. So that when you actually ask for, for dynamic memory using by dynamic memory, I just mean heap memory. When you ask for heap memory using malloc, it will be able to kind of go through the free list and be like, ah, oh, yeah, I have a free block of memory that is at least as big as what you've asked for. I will give you a pointer to that. And then I'll also record some things such as the size of the allocation and the fact that it's now allocated and you can't use that block of memory anymore. There's a bunch of bookkeeping that goes on. And then you basically get that pointer back. Now, the actual implementation of malloc is kind of dependent on the implementation. Right. I have linked a few, I've, I've dropped some links in the description. If you want to know more about exactly what malloc does and how it works, it's a fairly heavy function. There's a lot of bookkeeping that needs to be done and you don't just get your memory. And to make things even worse, if you've asked for more memory than is actually in that free list, in that initial kind of allocation that your operating system has given you, then your application, your program has to actually ask your operating system, Hey, I need some more memory, please. And that is very expensive. So there's that potential cost, which is huge. Really the point that I'm trying to make here is that allocating memory on the heap is a whole thing. Whereas allocating memory on the stack is like one CPU instruction. That is all I want you to take away from this video, really. The fact that the differences between these two are primarily the allocation. Now, you could argue that the other benefit of allocating memory on the stack or just storing variables in the stack is the fact that they're close together in memory and therefore they can basically fit onto one kind of CPU cache line. If we're looking at the actual code that we've got here though, I mean, we're talking about using the heap, potentially like a couple of cache misses versus in the stack, maybe we wouldn't get any after we kind of request that first stack variable, we put something onto the stack. A couple of cache misses versus no cache misses is like no big deal at all. You probably won't notice the difference at all. If we're dealing with a couple of million of cache misses, right? A couple million cache misses, that's a big deal. But with a few cache misses, like it's kind of, you can't really argue the point that the fact that the memory is closer together on the stack and the fact that the stack is probably hot because you're continually accessing it just, just by keeping like local variables there and also putting stuff into registers for when you pop functions onto the stack and stuff like that. Um, that's kind of a valid point, but in the real world, you probably won't notice the difference because you're just not getting enough cache misses for it to actually make, uh, for it to actually cause a problem. So the difference, the big difference between the two is the allocation. The allocation is the slow part. Allocating memory on the stack is one CPU instruction. In fact, let's take a look at the generated assembly behind what we've just written and we can see what it actually does. I'm just gonna compile this code by hitting control F7. In my properties for my project, I've also just got under C++ output files, I've got assembler output to assembly with source code so that we can look at it. And here we have the assembly. So let's just go down to our value variable. Okay. So here's our code, int value equals five. That is the CPU instruction that it runs. Now this is compiled in debug mode, keep that in mind. So there may be some extra things when it comes to the heap comparison, but for the stack, you can see all it does is it moves five into a register, that's it, done. Or specifically into this kind of stack pointer at a specific offset. But the idea is that's it, it's one CPU instruction. Now with the array, we kind of have two things here and it actually does a bit of a multiplication, whatever. I'm not gonna talk about the semantics of that, but you can see what it's really just done is it's just allocated enough space for our kind of array here. And that's it. You, and with, I mean, these are just setting variables, whatever. And with our vector allocation, again, it's called the constructor over here. But other than that, the allocation is actually just immediate. Now, here is our allocation on the heap. Look at what that does. 
The main thing is it calls an entire operator and that operator new calls malloc and then that obviously has to go through the free list and check to see if we've got enough memory and gather the memory and record the fact that it's now been taken and how much has been allocated and then we have to delete it after we're done whole nightmare right and if we keep reading you can see the same thing obviously happens for the array and then finally if we look at even deleting uh the vector first of all is quite heavy and it does call the constructor of course the same as our stack the delete is incredibly heavy as well. Keep in mind, this is compiled in debug mode, which is why you're seeing so much code. It would be a lot leaner in release mode, but still there's a lot going on here. And then of course, with array deleting and deleting vector, we get a bunch of stuff as well. But again, main point being that allocating that value five on the stack is just that. That's all it is, right? And of course, if this was a class that just had a bunch of integers, it would look the same the same essentially, right? I mean, you can see that the vector allocation looks exactly the same. It's just called the constructor. So I hope that all of that is kind of clear to you. The fact that you should try and allocate on the stack whenever possible. The only reason really to allocate on the heap is if you can't allocate on the stack, whether, whether you need that lifetime to actually be longer than the scope of your function or whatever scope you're dealing with, or you specifically need more data. Like I want to load a texture that's 50 megabytes or something like that. That's not going to fit onto the stack. You'll have to allocate that on the heap and all that kind of stuff, right? But if you can, you should be allocating on the stack all the time because it's like one CPU instruction. And that's very, very real performance difference. Now, one more time, just so that this is completely clear, the performance difference is the allocation. So if you were theoretically to pre-allocate, I don't know, a four gigabyte block of memory before you ran your program on the heap. And then you were to kind of heap allocate from that pre-allocated for like gigabyte block of memory, it would basically be the same, right? The only thing you're potentially dealing with there is again, CPU cache misses, but there's probably not enough of them to actually matter. So the fact that when you call new, it has to go through the free list and ask for memory and book keep all of that. That is the slow part of the stack versus the heap. The actual access is usually negligible, right? Usually, not always. We might talk more about CPU cache optimization and stuff like that. Certainly if you're iterating through a collection of a million elements and every single one of them is a cache miss, you're gonna see a very real performance difference between if you have everything kind of contiguously or fragmented, but that's a, another video. Drop a comment if you wanna see that. I think I'll make it um, because that's probably something that's very interesting, very interesting to a lot of people. But anyway, that's about it for this video. We're definitely going to learn more about kind of allocating in the real world and how we can minimize allocations. We'll have to spend quite a bit of time discussing allocations when we actually start our game engine series, because it's very important for kind of real world applications. Uh, and, and by real world applications, it's been real time applications. So it's really important for games essentially not to continuously allocate frame to frame because that will be slow. So we have to basically come up with some clever memory management techniques if we want our game engine to actually be efficient, which is why we will definitely be discussing that in the game engine series. Anyway, I hope, I've, I hope I've answered all of your kind of stack first heap questions. If I didn't drop a comment below, I'll maybe make a follow up video if I need to. I think that's about it though. I mean, really, we didn't go too in depth into how it actually works on like an operating system level, but I think for most people, it's probably gonna be enough. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. You can also support this series and everything that I do here on YouTube by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge shout out to all of my patrons there. This video that you're seeing right now probably wouldn't exist if it wasn't for them. So again, huge thank you. And there's a bunch of really cool rewards that you, that, that you can actually get if you go over there and you help support this channel. Next time, I don't even know what we're gonna talk about next time. I've got a list, but if you guys wanna see something specific, drop a comment below and just hit the thumbs up button on any comment that you like so that the kind of top rated comments kind of go up to the top. And I'll see if I can make a video on specifically that because I wanna make videos that you guys wanna see. I will see you next time. Goodbye.